Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chuck. Harlan, I want to thank you. I said it to you today. Thank you for honoring us to honor you. Because it is those people that stand up and say, count on me, is why people follow. And you have made that mark on all of these people and so many thousands of others. And in a little bit I'm going to talk about your mark your own commitment and what it will mean to Israel as it continues your legacy forward, but to your family and to you, thank you very much. Our organization started 121 years ago. 121 years ago before there was a state of Israel. It was a dream of 4,000 years. A man who had died at the age of 44, in his 30s, he challenged the world to work because he understood that us without a homeland, the people without a home, a home in which had been our ancestral soil for 4,000 years, was going to be a people that were homeless. We have seen in recent times, not so distant, just in the past six months, thousands of Ukrainians that had nowhere else but Israel to call home. And it is unfortunate that in the world there will be Jews who will find themselves without the house in which they had, but a home in which they will have because of what you have done. And it was last week when I was in Israel that I got to experience something that I've experienced 63 times just in the past 10 years, and that is North Americans who are making Aliyah moving to Israel. Not to defend Israel, not because they are scared of where they're living, because they love this land, they love the place of Israel in which we have created in such short 74, soon to be 75 years. Our organization started as that major gift opportunity, but it was a blue box, a pushkin. That people would take coins, that would literally take food off of the plates of their family, and place them into that pushkin. For somebody to, like me to pick it up, Without a map, without a video, without a dinner, they ask you to trust because of hope and dreams. And acres by acre of land was repurchased to make the land of Israel what we have today. Now, Jewish National Fund, I always hate to ever correct any leadership, but my club going to correct it. Nine years ago, the organization of 121 years, an organization that took coins from a blue box, nine years ago, we set a direction to have a $1 billion campaign within 10 years. So I'm here to tell you that $969 million later, one year ahead of time, the Jewish National Fund will finish its $1 billion campaign. And we're going to be setting a new strategy for the next 10 years. We have over 600,000 people who have contributed to our campaign. And we're going to work on 1 million voices for Israel across the United States. Because we know that momentum is there. We know that people care. The fastest growing part of our donor demographic is our 22 to 40 year old. Now why are they joining us? Why are young people? Why are we going to go after a million people to be voices for Israel? Because we're bold. Because we're focused and we're strategic. And we are an organization that makes a difference for the land and people of Israel every single day. In that bold and that strategic method, we took on 24 years ago a water catastrophe that faced Israel. 
catastrophe. And you're hearing about all the water problems here in the United States. And we will either face those water problems or people will move from those areas. That's what happens. But in Israel, we had no choice. We are faced with a water catastrophe, and you can check the prediction was by the year 2020, Israel would be completely out of water. But we knew we could challenge the American Jewish community with bold and dreams and vision. And they met those needs. And we built 250 reservoirs and we recycled wastewater. Israel reuses 90% of its water. The country next to it is Spain at 17%. The United States at 4%. Every drop of water is reused and brings life to Israel. And that same technology is now being used throughout the world, including the United States of America. That is the Jewish National Fund story of boldness. It is the boldness that took on the Negev. 60% of the land of Israel, 60. And when we started working in the Negev, less than 6% of the population lived on 60% of the land. We started working in a town of Beersheba, or we worked in towns of Be'er Milka, little new communities that we were developing in big cities in Beersheba. Beersheba was losing population every year. But we knew we had to change the entire makeup of the Negev. And I have to tell you that 17 years later, with a seven mile river walk, the river doesn't have water. But the park that was built on it three times the size of Central Park is complete. The 13,000 seat amphitheater is complete. And a 29 acre lake is full of water in the middle of Beersheba, the second largest lake in Israel. That's the Jewish National Fund boldness and drive to make things happen. It is up in the northern part of Israel, Harlem. 17% of the land of Israel. And in the area, just one area is the greater Kiryat area. If you don't know where that is, they call it the finger of Israel. It's on the far north. It's in a great neighborhood. Syria, Lebanon. <laughs> and in 1954, there was 38,000 people that lived there. And in 2022, there's 22,000 people that live there. They are the ones who could not leave. They are the poor that could not get out. They were facing the Lebanons and the Syrias. And they couldn't make the choice to move. So in our bold, in our strategic, in our bold methodology, in our vision to make things happen, up in that area, we spent two and a half years. We should have just come here, Harlan, we're going to learn from you. We understood that food was a major part of the economy there, farming, growing. We also understood that if you looked at it, it had a magnificent landscape like Tuscany. So we decided, us, our involved people, our donors from throughout the United States, together with the people in the greater Kiryat area, that we're going to build a food technology center, which we opened up in September, which has foreign nations that are coming and learning food security and food technology in a place called Israel, because the next great technology is not on your iPhone, it's food technology. It's how to make protein happen for the third world. It's how to feed the rest of the world. It's how to protect the food that we have. And Israel is a leader of that, and now in the Kiryat Shmona area, we are the leader. We also knew that young people couldn't move there without a medical system. And I'm sorry to say that in Israel in 2022, in the greater Kiryat Shmona area, there was not the medical services that still centralized that you'll have to go to Tiberias or Yerushalayim or Tel Aviv. No young family is going to move their small child 
and risk that they can break their arm and have to travel for two hours. So we're building our third medical center that we built in the South already, and we're building in greater Pierre area to provide that housing sites for young people. You heard today from Rebecca that we are helping with the young people to bring them, every young Israeli, to feel pride for where they live. And then we're building the Galileo Culinary Institute by Jane. It's going to be one of the greatest culinary institutes in the world. Now that's a bold statement. Because you have Cordon Bleu. You have the Culinary Institute of America. But we know with 17 top chefs from the world that have already joined us, that when our school opens in the next nine months, with a chocolatier factory and a wine tasting, that we're going to bring people from all over the world to be world-class chefs. Because they also get to learn from a place called Israel and the Jewish people. So Cordon Bleu, you can learn French cooking. But in our culinary institute, we're going to teach you 82 different nationalities of cooking. Tunisian and Yemenite, Ethiopian and Polish, Romanian, from all across the globe, the Jews have come. And at our culinary institute in a place called Israel, you get to learn it. You get to feel it. And then, you don't stay in Israel. You go back to your place in Vietnam, and yes, somebody from Vietnam is on it. Or in England, or in France, or in the United States. You'll have learned how Israel really is in the real story of Israel from our culinary institute. And at our restaurant, Arlen, you'll be able to have people, as you told me today, will be able to have your name recognized there, and people will come from all over the world. You told me today that one of the great joys that you got was standing in the back of the room and watching people smile, and watching people enjoy themselves. And every day at our culinary institute, Arlen, that's going to continue. They're going to taste great food. They're going to have great conversation. And then we're going to transform the area into the food and culinary capital of the world. So I'm telling you now, here in Cleveland, Ohio, in three or four years, you're going to be bugging us to get you the greatest the reservations at some of the greatest restaurants in Israel in Kiryat Shemona. And we're going to turn it from 22,000 to 75,000 people. And it's going to be an area, yes, surrounded by Lebanon and Syria, but it's going to be a strong, vibrant community in Israel bringing strength to the north as we have to the south. And that's because of generosity and boldness and strategic vision of the Jewish National Fund. And then, we're on our way to creating the largest project happening in the Jewish world today. Eight years ago, we bought an American high school in Israel, the Alexander Mus High School in Israel. I don't know if any of you have children or if you went, grandchildren that went. But it is a semester abroad experience for high school kids. We're now bringing, when we bought the school, it was 500. We're now up to 1,500 students a year. It's celebrating its 50th anniversary and 30,000 students who have graduated, who have come from leaders. You should know that 51% of our students come from public and private school. Out of those 51%, 65% of the parents have never been to Israel. We are turning a generation on, teaching them their academics but also 4,000 years of our history and loving and living the land and the leadership that they will bring back to every one of our Jewish communities. So we needed a second campus and we dream big at Jewish National Fund. It's not without boldness or strategic thought. So on 20 acres of land in a place called Beersheba, we're building the World Zionist Village. It's a World Zionist Village that will increase our high school to be able to handle 5,000 students a year. Just to give you the impact 
When we celebrate the 50th anniversary now, 50 years from now, with 5,000 students, we would have been able to have, as part of our impact, 250,000 alumni. And then we're going to build a gap year program. Not our gap year, gap year for others, so that 18-year-olds can go to Israel on first-class facilities on our village. And in Israel, the gap year is before the army, is called Mechinot. And 4,700 Israelis are now going to gap year before they go to the army, and the Israeli Defense Ministry wants it to be 10,000. They know that 18 year olds are not ready for the army yet. So can you imagine that we're going to have high school kids from all over the world. We're going to have 18 year olds from the United States. We're going to have 18 year olds from Israel all together in a village, but that's not all. We're going to have apartments for postgraduates. So instead of going to Los Angeles or New York or China or anywhere else to get that one year internship with the Googles and the Microsofts and the Dell, They'll be able to do it in a place called Beersheba, all which are located there. Microsoft, Google, and Dell. And they'll be able to spend a year in internship and be able to be on our village. And every Shabbat, go to our young leadership groups in Beersheba for Shabbat dinner. But that's not all. We'll have a guest house for over 110 rooms. So it will be from Barcelona. We'll bring teachers to teach about Israel in our village, utilizing our teachers and our classrooms, or from Birmingham, Alabama, or Cleveland, Ohio, or an Orthodox group from the five towns in Woodmere, or a Reformed Congregation in Los Angeles, or a young leadership group from World Jewish Congress from Paris. And they'll all be coming together in our village, our village, that will open up in five years. Our village. And at 9 o'clock at night, maybe they're going to have a marshmallow. And a speaker on the footsteps of Abraham. And maybe somebody from Barcelona will meet people from Birmingham. And Cleveland will meet people from Kiryat Shimona. And our Jewish community will have a conversation in which we're yearning for, for our children and our children's children. A conversation about shared values and common destiny. Not about right or left. Not about religious or not religious. That is the conversation that we're having that is the wrong conversation. Our Jewish community of tomorrow is looking for the new conversation. And the Jewish National Fund, through its boldness and its vision and strategic thought, is going to have a village that's going to bring our Jewish community together for a new conversation. And ironically, ironically, it is located just 500 yards away from Abraham's well, where our conversation first began. Thank you very much.